you have very challenging problems where a lot of people would say that's too difficult or that's too hard, but at the Skunk Works, the response is, I don't know the answer, but we'll figure it out. The Skunk Works is a, a risk tolerant place and being risk tolerant, we're encouraged to find unique solutions. There's a tolerance for failure. Uh, if you have an opportunity to fail, you have an opportunity to learn. Being able to create an environment like that, you're able to go a leap ahead or a couple leaps ahead in, in technology because you're encouraged to look beyond the next thing. Look at various aspects of the product, speed, altitude, low observables, weight, the space inside it, and you manipulate how much of one you get and what it costs you in something else. And you're constantly turning those dials until you find what you think is the magical solution. Magic does happen on, in our design teams, on our projects. Uh, it's unexpected sometimes. It's very rewarding. I mean, there's no greater feeling than seeing what you've worked so hard to develop out there in the flesh. A disruptive technology enables leaps and bounds over what's been done. You're solving very complicated problems that are highly constrained. You have to come up with very innovative solutions in order to do that. There could be ways in which we could mimic evolutionary behavior in the way aircrafts operate, in particular unmanned systems that have a lot of autonomous capability. And if we can embed capabilities for those aircraft to actually learn from what they're experiencing from one mission to another, uh, we can enrich how those aircraft can operate, how, how efficiently they can operate as time goes on. So robotics are at the heart and soul of unmanned aircraft. The airplanes are to a point where they can pass information onto each other, and they're really getting to the point where, where they operate as teams, even without pilots. So the path forward is with a collaborative system of aircraft. Some might be manned, some might be unmanned. Design is where the right brain and the left brain meet each other. As a designer, we're influenced by everything, but what better element to pull from than something that's evolved over time? Birds have shorter wingspans now today because they need to be more aerodynamic to not be hit by cars. That's something that's happened in the last hundred years. I think that the lines between evolution and revolution, and, and, and particularly in our industry, are, are pretty blurred you want to do what's radical. So we're still using engineering principles and abiding by those laws, but we're doing it in ways that no one expected. The technologies are at a turning point for, for many areas, including unmanned autonomous technologies, propulsion technologies, airframe construction technologies, that, that all of these are coming uh, to fruition to some degree and, and we're maturing them to a point now where we can apply them to new capabilities that we can provide our customers. I think that we're positioned better than anyone on the planet to make aviation history.